The What Up Doe Show. Your commentary on sports, entertainment, and alternative news. It is Black Friday, y'all. Not just any Friday, Black Friday. You know why? Hey, because it's What Up Doe, the What Up Doe, the What Up Doe Show. It's because I'm black, damn it. Yo, what's going on, y'all? Thanks uh, for listening this morning. It is a Black Friday. I hope you're being careful out here uh, today. Um, I got some birthdays today. I have uh, my man Smokey Moore, James Moore. Uh, we used to play baseball together back in the day. Um, DJ Superstar, a.k.a. Zelma Lee. Um, Langston Carrier. And last but certainly, far from least, a really, really close friend of mine. We go all the way back. She's like a sister to me, uh, Yvette Simpson. So, happy birthday to all of y'all. Mm-hmm. Uh, yesterday, I um, accidentally played Today's Beats. So I didn't get to do the throwback. So it's now an old school Friday, and I'm going to play the throwback Thursday beats today. So we're going to call it an old school Friday today. That's cool with y'all? As if it matters. Let's go on and get this party started. Oh, yeah. I like the old school beats. Let's bring them. Uh, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> Y'all chirping. Okay, in sports yesterday, of course, it was Thanksgiving, so we had football on top of football on top of football. The San Francisco 49ers playoff hopes are on life support after a 19-3 defeat at home to the Seattle Seahawks on Thanksgiving. I hate to admit this, but Seattle has Frisco's number, baby. You know I hate to admit it. Anybody that knows me know I hate to admit that. Um, But it's true. I'm convinced that the only reason Frisco made it to the Super Bowl two years ago was because they didn't have to go through Seattle to get there. Same could be true this year. If they make the playoffs and Seattle falls to someone else, Frisco on any given Sunday can defeat anybody else in the NFC. Cornerback Richard Sherman owned Colin Kaepernick's punk ass last night, giving up zero completions and collected two interceptions. The Philadelphia Eagles' explosive offense feasted on a depth famish, a Dallas Cowboys defense at AT AT&T Stadium, a.k.a. AKA Jerry's World. Philadelphia set the tone from the beginning and was firing on all cylinders, defeating the boys 33-10 on Thursday to take sole possession of first place in the NFC East with a 9-3 record. Latone's new favorite player, Mark Sanchez, was balling out of control. And only one home team won yesterday. Detroit! That's right. It was the Detroit Lions. They have embraced a new defensive identity in 2014, but that didn't mean the timeless Thanksgiving tradition of serving up several helpings of Calvin Johnson had to come to an end. Megatron caught 11 passes for 146 yards and two touchdowns on Thursday, leading the Lions to a 34-17 spanking of the Chicago Bears. Running back Joyke Bell from Wayne State University. Detroit down. Wayne State University. Detroit! Yeah, Joyke Bell um, did the hooray, hip-hop hooray ho every time he scored a touchdown, which was two times. He added two touchdowns along with 90 yards rushing. And Matt Stafford threw for 390 yards, two touchdowns, and zero interceptions. Detroit is 8-4 and four at halftime. Uh, Detroit is eight and four and a half game behind 73 Green Bay. Who has to, I'm um, late eight and three, right? Yeah. The eight and three Green Bay Packers who plays new England this weekend. Anyway, I fucked that up at the end. I was going so well. I hate that. I hate that. Detroit. What up though? Entertainment. Uh, an anonymous person is seeking to is seeking an egg donor from Angelina Jolie from an Angelina. In, uh, let's try that shit again. What up, Doe Entertainment? An anonymous person is seeking an egg donor from an Angelina Jolie lookalike and offering thirty thousand dollars for the donation. The ad was placed in a Beverly Hills newspaper, and the ad is very specific: white, tall, slender, 
high cheekbones and forehead. Anyone with the right stuff can make $30,000 for two cycles. Ain't that a bad a bitch. That's kind of creepy if you ask me. I would think that I think that is kind of creepy. What up, Joe News? He might be a creepy clown. In Norwich, England, a British museum said it paid nearly $65,000 for a bronze, bronze Age dagger found by a farmer who was using it as a doorstop. The Norwich Castle Museum said the 21-inch ceremonial dagger, believed to be about 3,500 years old, had been serving as a doorstop at the home of a Rudham farmer who discovered it on his property until he had it examined by experts. The item dubbed the Rudham Dirk was examined by Norfolk's Portable Antiquities scheme and found to be of incredible importance $65,000 worth of importance that would make it important to me and a just rich France a French inventor says pills he developed to make bodily gases smell like chocolate were inspired by a particularly flatulent meal with friends Christian Pointeville said his Luton Malin, or Crafty Imp, line of peels can make a customer's bodily gases smell like chocolate, roses, or violets. <laughs> smell that, baby. Does it smell like roses? Yes, my poots smell like roses. My ass smells like violets. My farts smells like chocolate. Pointeville developed the chocolate scent specially for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, don't you want a candy bar now? Don't you now have the taste for a Snickers? In Melbourne, Australia, a woman hanging laundry on a clothesline in her backyard fell 10 feet into a sinkhole and had to tread water at the bottom. Melissa Beaumont said her mother, Christina, was visiting an elderly friend to help with household chores Tuesday when she fell into the backyard sinkhole. The emergency responders said it was about 20 minutes before a neighbor heard her screams and called for help. Ambulance Victoria paramedic Stephanie Palambaris said Beaumont landed in water. Otherwise, she'd be kaput, kapini, and her boots smell like roses in London England a British man said he was walking with his girlfriend in a wooded area northeast of London when they discovered a huge marijuana farm just off the path Oscar Lahren said he and his girlfriend strayed off the path in the Epping Forest to seek out mushrooms when they instead discovered about 70 marijuana plants that appear to have been professionally cultivated La da 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 da. Get your face number. Da 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 da. That's my new thing, man. Every time I make a mistake, damn it, I'm just gonna do a take two. Get your Facebook numbers up, folks. A Stockholm, Sweden, a Swedish luxury hotel in Stockholm announced it is accepting social media as currency, offering free stays to anyone with more than 2,000 Facebook friends. The Nordic Light Hotel in Stockholm said anyone with more than 2,000 personal Facebook friends, 100,000 likes on their Facebook page, or 100,000 followers on Instagram can stay at the facility for up to seven nights in exchange for social media posts at check-in and check-out time. Marcus Majewski, chief executive officer of the Nordic Light Hotel, said the business considers social media posts to be a form of currency as they provide marketing for the hotel. Good for you. Good for you. Because I got high. Because I got high. They should do that and uh, never mind. In Beijing, locals are furious since the clothing store has banned Chinese shoppers. With employees calling them annoying. Wasn't that in China? Anyway, the stores posted a sign saying Chinese not admitted except for staff. We didn't want to hang up the sign in, in the first place and lead people to think we Chinese like don't look down upon ourselves. But some Chinese customers are too annoying. A salesperson told the What Up Do Show, pointing out that the wholesale store mainly sells to foreigners like us. Workers also explained that Chinese women often try on a lot of clothes, 
but end up buying nothing. And one time, a surveillance camera caught a Chinese customer stealing a foreigner wallet. Hmm, I had to pay for that. I had to pay for that. I don't like that. And for those that can't see me, my lips are still moving like the Chinese movie. Another, another said the decision was aimed at preventing competitors from copying design. They steal my shit. The move was ignited. The move has ignited a storm of controversy with one angry person asking, is this still China? Is this still China? Is this yeah, it's China? Uh, yeah. Evidently, it's not China. It's America. Welcome to my world. In Newcastle, Pennsylvania, environmental official, officials are trying to determine why an odor resembling cat urine has been lingering in a neighborhood for more than three weeks. The Pennsylvania Department of Environmental Protection opened an investigation after residents said the odor first showed up strongly in the Mahoningtown area October 31st and has lingered ever since with frequent spikes in potency. Amanda Whitman, information specialist for the DEP, said crews used a, a mobile analytical unit to take atmospheric samples during odor events in two heavily affected areas. But the test results typically take several weeks to process. Meanwhile, enjoy the smell of cat piss. Merry Christmas. That's all I got, man. I am going to get on out of here because I got to get myself to work. And I just want to first say big up to my man, Latone Hart. Uh, he has a, a show called The 730 Show. His latest episode, 100 Days, is one of the best episodes he's ever done. I highly recommend you give it a listen. It's The 730 Show. You can hear it on Stitcher.com. You can also find it on uh iTunes, just search hashtag 7, the word 30, all, all together, hashtag 730 show, and you'll find it. Um, I'm, I'm serious. The episode is called, uh, it's called 100 Days, 100 Days. Awesome, awesome, awesome commentary. I, I've loved every moment of it. I couldn't have said it better myself. In fact, I didn't say it better myself. Anyway, uh, big up to Dino Red of The Shiznit Show. You can find him on Stitcher, also at theshiznitshow.com. And uh, also, I want to say big up to Lavinia. She be show sure enough. You can find her on her Twitter. No, she's also on uh, Stitcher. Stitcher.com. Her show is called Straight No Chaser. She also does a show with her cousin, Bajetto Rice. It's called um, Just Thinking Out Loud. Both very good commentaries. Both shows are awesome. Love them. Uh, big up to Gil Laurie. Uh, he does a show called The Onyx Truth. You can hear that one on Stitcher. Stitcher.com as well. And also my man Murray Riley Jr. of the Stomach Shout Talk Show. You can hear him now also on Stitcher. Stitcher.com. Uh, that's it for my show, man. I want to thank you guys for listening. Oh, I can't forget my man Enrique Black of the 5 Minutes Away uh, podcast. Also can be heard on Stitcher.com. I made my playlist on Stitcher. Is, getting, is growing long, man. Big up to all of y'all. You have a great day. Have a safe uh, Black Friday. And I'm out of here like last year. Peace! Oh, and in case I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. What up, dude?